everyone, this is uh, Fede Masagari here, and this is the moment where everyone was up in their seats rooting for Anand because he has made this amazing move on sacrifice, and he fought valiantly. Well, let's review the final game of the World Championship match between Magnus Carlsen and Anand. Alright, so, let's look at the whole game, starting from the move, E4. Okay, so to give you some context, uh, if Carlson wins the game, he wins the World Championship. If Anand wins, he has 50% chance going into the next uh, final game 12. So this is game 11. So, <clears throat> although Anand is playing black, he would very much like to win here. Or at least draw this game so he can go into the next game and win with white. So, E4, E5 was played. Knight F3, Knight C6. Bishop b5, and then goes for Berlin defense. What worked for him so well in this world championship? Castles takes d4, knight d6. Bishop takes knight, recapture, and there we go. The start. If you'd like a further explanation, uh, you can look at my video of game seven where I uh, look at other alternatives for black here and white. And uh, as usual, Carlson plays ace3. And instead of playing h5 and king e8 like last game, I now play something sharper this time. He went for bishop d7. Okay, so what's the plan of bishop d7? Well, black's plan is to start expanding on the queen side. A little more ambitious here by playing c5, b6, king c8. Maybe the king will go to b7. And then... You know, try developing the king side, or queen side. And also, black has to make sure the knight come, doesn't come to g5, so move like h6 would be prudent. Anyway, Carlson played knight c3 here because a natural move like g4 would be a mistake because the king is still on d8 and can go back to e8, and suddenly. Black is counterattacking with huge, uh, it's a huge counterattack with h5, and knight to d5, bishop e7, and then white is thwarted back. So, Carlson first plays knight c3, and Alan plays h6. So, here, if the king goes to c8, now the king is away from the king's side. Now, Carlson can play g4, knight e7, knight g5. Bishop has to go to e8, no choice, and then f4. And white has a really good position here. So this is what Carlson was hoping for. Now, obviously, Anand is very well prepared, and he doesn't allow this. So he played h6. Good move. And both players... Uh, so I just showed you Black's plan, which is to go to the king. You know, he wants to develop his uh, queen side piece a little bit. Like that, or like that. Now, what is white's plan, though? Well... <clears throat> White, uh, we all know that g4 is kind of overextending here because white cannot follow it up with knight g5 here. So first white develops his queen side with b3. I don't play king c8. Carlson played bishop b2. c5 was played. Rook d1, b6. As I said, black's following this plan. And Carlson played rook f1. So fairly standard, white brought up all his pieces. Black is lagging behind in development, but he has the two bishops in return. So long-term prospects. If white's attack fizzles out, these two bishops are going to start playing and then probably going to capture all these pawns. Okay, so here, Anand played bishop to e6. And this is sort of a, a novelty, actually. Previously, Black played knight to e7 to prevent knight d5. And then white played knight e2. Kind of go to f4. And then black played knight g6, preventing knight f4. And then this is very logical. White plays h4, trying to attack the knight. Black plays really good move, bishop g4, protecting the square. And white also counters the good move, knight h2. 
attacking the bishop, sacrificing a pawn, and top grandmasters have played this before. And then suddenly white gets a nice attack with e6. And then this game could be a draw with good good play, but I think Carlson wanted to go for this, uh, probably, but uh, Anand obviously knew about this game, and he played bishop to e6. A little more ambitious here. And uh, Carlson here played knight d5 here, trying to make use of that position of the bishop by playing knight f4. Here, Anand tried the most ambitious move, g5. A lot of people were surprised by this move, but I think it makes a lot of sense. Preventing knight f4, also preventing an f4 in the future, and getting some space on the king side. It does weaken the f6 square a bit, but the knight going there can't really attack anything. I mean, there's nothing to attack on these squares are empty, so what's the point of having an outpost if you can't attack anything? Uh, another move that you could have played was king b7, but the knight f4, and then suddenly there's some pressure on the pawn, and then on the bishop, and then after the bishop's gone, the rook could come in. So that's why I like g4 a lot. So, um, And Carlson just continued um, controlling the center, and I'll continue with this plan of developing on the queen side. Uh, again, white doesn't have much of a plan here, so Carlson would like to push back the knight with g4, and then perhaps bolster his queen side with king g3. Just slowly, you know, incrementally improving his position. Well, Anand continues plan, queen side expansion. Basically, pawn breakthrough so that the rook can come into the game. Carlson put a stopper to that, a4. And now Anand played knight e7, anticipating g4, which Carlson can play, and then knight to g6. So, basically, black is slowly improving his position because White doesn't have any entry points right now on the in this file or any any square actually. So black can, um, you know, that's the advantage of having these two bishops. By the way, it controls all the squares that you know the white and the dark squares. So Anand's played a very nice Berlin here, and it's you know, and it's a very solid position. And it's this is a fight. Bishop e7 was played. Carlson improves his knight position. Anand puts a rook on an open file. Carlson continues improving the knight position, perhaps going to f6, although as I mentioned before, not sure where it's going to go from there. So, and the place drops the bishop back after the cleared the way for the rook. Carlson plays knight e f6, which could be a mistake, considering what an unplayed. I mean, true, um, you know, fighting for the world championship fashion, and I unquote a beautiful move here, b5. And Carlson was standing, almost looking up at the ceiling here because of, you know, he was so surprised here. And the idea is very, very extraordinary. It's it's so uncommon here. It's basically undermine the knight on d5 by sacrificing a pawn. Now, there are two ways why he can recapture here. He can recapture the a pawn and the c pawn. So let's see what happens with the a pawn looks the most solid here because it still keeps the knight in check but remember the pawn wanted to come down to a4 and that's exactly what he's going to do a4 undermining these pawns so it takes and now the rook comes active and we go back to undermining the knight and suddenly it's really hard for white to defend all these all these squares and pawns the rook coming in and suddenly everything is in trouble the king's in trouble the pawn's in trouble the knight's in trouble for example rook c1 can be met with a tactical shot, knight f4, because takes, king, pawn takes, king takes, and now the rook comes in. So the, and the king is in danger, the pawn is in danger, bishop's in danger, I mean, black is clearly better here. So, Carlson needs to tread quite carefully here. Now let's look at the other, other pawn capture. C takes b5. So this also looks pretty solid because now there's no a4, but there's another pawn break for black. C6, beautiful move. Takes, a king takes, and suddenly this knight is, the solid knight is not so solid anymore. It's attacked, it's attacked three times and only defended twice by these rook and uh, knight. So the knight has no choice but to drop back, and then suddenly, as I mentioned before, those Berlin bishops can come in the game when the position opens up, and suddenly more pawns are dropping, and black is, black should win this game. 
So, Carlson didn't panic, though. He showed his class by making the best move in the position, arguably. Bishop to c3. Just keeping it... Keeping it still. Anand took. Carlson took back. But still, the pawn is uh, weak now. And Anand played the best move here, king c6. Surprising the king is very safe here. Not only is it safe, it's actually putting more pressure on the poor knight. And... Carlson thought for a long time here, and he made this move, which probably is the best move, king f3. Trying to guard the knight in hopes that guarding the knight will keep this pawn alive. And here Anand plays rook b8, seizing the file. Now this move might have been a mistake, actually, because the rook was doing such a good job that Anand should have had enough faith in his position, uh, in his current position, and not to switch plans. What he should have done here was to play bishop to e7, get rid of this knight, which reduces support for this knight. Now let's see some variations here. What if um, you know, white just plays a random move here? So let's say uh, king e4. Simple move. Well, that I can just play bishop takes f6. Pawn has to take f6. And now I can take with the bishop. And then king d6. And suddenly, as we can see, you know, white lost all his all his uh, knights and he's left with a pretty a bishop that's not really good and all these weak squares and weak pawns. I think black's better here. So let's look at some other variations such as uh, knight takes c7. Knight takes c7 and suddenly there's no way to protect the pawn. Surprising, isn't it? Let's look at knight h5 here. But then that loses the pawn to bishop takes d5. As you can see, white's position is collapsing. The, bu the best move probably is knight to e3 dropping back. And then knight f4 comes in. And white can play h4. Trade rooks. Trade the knight. And then rook comes to b8. And the best white can hope for is a draw here. Like that. But still, black is has a lot of pressure. So I should have believed in his position and played bishop e7 and undermined the center furthermore. And Carlson would have had to play really accurately to hold the game. But he played rook d8. So this is the start of all the prep problems for um, Anand here. Carlson played this really nice move, king e4. And now it's really hard for black to create any plan. Because he took off the pressure of the center. There's nothing to be gained from invading on this square. For example, rook b3 could be met with rook b1. And unfortunately, backing up the rook loses a pawn in the in the future. White doesn't even have to take it right now. It's actually dropping off later. So as you can see, this is what Anand really didn't like. His after b his b fight didn't. He was probably expected something more out of b fight, and he 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 could have had it with bishop b seven, but the rook b eight move was inaccurate. So Anand said, oh, he said to himself, um, okay, I had to create something out of this. This is my only shot." And he made the daring move, which a lot of people jumped out of their seats for, rook b4. Now, I still think it's a good move. But um, Anand's nerves were playing a lot, and he made a couple of inaccuracies later. So rook b4, not necessary, obviously. Rook b3 was okay. Or simply bishop g7. And then sometime in the future, rook b4. But I think Anand lost his nerves a little bit before b4. Carlson played it immediately, bishop takes b4. Even though he probably didn't expect this. And now the problem is this. Anand played c takes b4. He wanted to activate his bishop. But what then? It's really hard for black to make progress. And it's all white has to do is keep exchanging pieces. What black should have done is a takes b4, opening up that rook. Now suddenly, it is a little dangerous for white here. White can try to defend with rook a1. And then it looks like it's hard for black to make progress as well. But if only Anand saw this idea that I'm about to show you here. Bishop g7. Now a normal move like rook c1 protecting the pawn. Would be met with this shot. Can you guys find it? Think about it for a second. This king is pretty vulnerable here. So... If you could blow up the position here, that you could even checkmate. So the right move here is knight takes e5, brilliant move. King takes e5, and then rook to e8. Who can find this move? 
It's crazy. Suddenly, the king is being checkmated almost. If you make a pass like rook a2 here, it's over. Bishop takes g4 check. King is king has nowhere to go. This is mate. So black has to start white has to start running with the king here, and then black wins a huge amount of material for it. And then suddenly he's he's just winning here. So I suspect that if Anand actually played a takes b4, this would have been a possibility. To sacrifice your knight like that and then play rook e8. What a finish. What a game that would have been. Right? So unfortunate, but Anand took on c4 b4 with the c pawn. And now black solid, but he has no plan. White has no plan either, but white has at least a way to trade pieces. And Carlson found the right way with knight h5. And I'm playing king b7, trying to play c4 so he can get the pawn. But Carlson doesn't care. He actually sacrificed that pawn just so he can trade pieces. Takes, 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 takes. He lost the pawn, but he saw that there is this nice place for the rook here. The activity is more important than a pawn. Anand himself tried for some activity, and Carlson again, active pieces, knight d5, attacking the pawn. And desperately, try, oh sorry, and desperately tried to play rook c6, but now we collected the pawn, bishop c5, and then giving back the material to trade again, trade, trade. King c6 was played because king takes here would lead to this, and desperate attempts like this would not work because the rook takes c5 is a check. And then the rook comes to b5 and collects the pawn. So Carlson played very ener energetically here, and it paid off because he kept trying to put his piece in the best positions, and then tactics worked out for him. So king c6, trying to keep the pieces. Knight b5, again, playing with the pieces, making sure the knight has squares so that it can defend this runaway pass pawn. And chopped up the knight, gathered another pawn. But again, active pieces and active pawns. Carlson created his own counterplay, and now king goes back, again, active pieces, trying to gather that pawn. Bishop went back, because the pawn was going to run away, and again, Carlson plays forcefully. Shows his class, h4, a4, and g5. Takes, takes, a3, and then finally, king c3 was the last move, holding back all these pawns, and then white will push this pawn down and while the bishop is distracted by this pawn, this pawn will be pushed. So, and resigned here. And that was it. Carlson Magnus became the 2014 world champion. It was a tough struggle and really fought valiantly. And it was a great match. Thanks for sticking with me and watching this game. And I hope you guys have a great day.